Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 12th video in the beginner's guide to Unity 6. This time we'll cover UI buttons. Remember to subscribe, click the notification bell and you can stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now on with the tutorial. So last time I actually forgot to import that uh, wooden house that I said I was going to. So let's actually do that first real quick. Let's go to our objects folder, drag and drop. And I will leave a link to this in the pinned comment if you want to head down there, download it and you can. Um, the idea of this was to just show that you can quickly and easily add uh, materials and everything to a house. Um, so we'll do that and then we'll go into the UI buttons. So if we go to where our bridge is, zoom in a little bit let's go to our wood house drag and drop it's a little bit big so let's decrease um 0.25 0.25 0 0.25 and as you can see it is just completely gray um mainly because of the material uh it is just the standard material there uh, but what we can do is right click on the farmhouse object at prefab and let's completely unpack and next thing, let's go to the materials and let's drag and drop this object onto here. So this is the texture that goes on just fine. It's created another material folder, but we can play around with this and do whatever we want to it. You know, it's we've done this kind of thing before. I'd recommend just playing around with it and making sure you're happy. Anyway, um, did I say you can download that for free from the pinned comment? I think I did. Anyway, let's uh, talk about UI buttons. So what are UI buttons useful for? Well, when it comes to mobile gaming and development, buttons are very, very useful because the way Unity 6 incorporates buttons is they're already preset for a touch screen, which means you don't need to do any extra programming to get a button to work on a mobile device. Uh, in this case, what we want to do is let's take a look at a button and let's put some code on the button to do something. The idea of what I want to do is open the gate whenever we press the button. So let's go to game object, let's go to UI, and let's go to button, if I can find it. There it is. And you can see it is in the center of our screen on the game view, it's very small. Let's put it in the bottom left. So let's use our rec tool and let's expand it so it's a little bit bigger. And then let's drag it down to the bottom left, have a look at game view, and that looks fine. Let's set the anchoring position to bottom left. And let's take a look at the button itself. It has this text. Well, let's actually name this something. Let's put open gate. And like with the text objects that we've had previously, you can change the font if you want to, because we already have the font asset. We can change the size, scale, color of it all. So let's have it as 50 and let's have, let's keep it as that color. The button itself has a couple of different options there too. So its normal color is currently white. We can change this if we want. Let's have this as a blue color. And if we go to game view, you should be able to see it just fine. Highlighted color means whenever our mouse is hovering over it, what color do we want it to be? What about, um, what about a, a kind of off blue color? There we go. Maybe that one. Press color, let's have it as a deep blue. So whenever we press it, we want it to turn deeply blue. Uh, selected color doesn't really matter too much. Let's have it maybe as a purple. I just want to kind of illustrate what you can do and how you can customize buttons. Disable color is whenever it isn't in use. So it's kind of faded. That's why the alpha on it is currently set as 128. If we press play, we should be able to see these button actions and colors working. So it's normal color is as it is. And if we hover over it, we should be able to see, ooh, if I have my mouse, it goes different. If we click it, it doesn't want to click. Um, let's actually try that again because we don't want it to, there we go. Right, so once again, let's press play. And right, it's not working as intended. So let's customize this a little bit more. Let's take the main camera from the player and let's place it just above the player. And then we can turn the player capsule off and then press play. 
And what this will do is it will give us the ability to actually interact with the canvas a bit better than what we would have done. There we go. Because at the moment, because we have a player capsule in the scene, that is overriding what our mouse is doing. In this case, it wasn't allowing us to open the gate. So if we have that there now, you can see when we select it, it turns that deep blue and it is selected. That's why it's now that kind of pinky purpley color. So we know our button is working. Next thing we want to do is we want to make this button actually work. Now to do that, I need to reset a couple of things in our scene. So let's get to work on that. Let's go to our gate, zoom in, and let's turn the gate back on. Now, if you recall, the gate itself already has an animation set to it. So if we were to press play, for example, it would play that animation. Now, what we're going to do here, oh, actually, now we think about it, this script holder will need to modify that. Um, but what we'll do in the meantime is we now need to make it so as the gate doesn't automatically play an animation. We want the button to be able to control that. So what we can do is if we scroll down to animator, you'll see controller gate. Double click this and it will open up the animator tab. You should see gate swing highlighted in orange. And what we need to do is prevent this from running. So to do that, anywhere in the grid, right click, create state and click on empty. And then on this new state, right click again and set as layer default. What this means is no animation will play, but we'll be able to call this animation in a script. So let's head back to our scene view. Let's go to the script holder and let's go on to start a script. So at the moment we have all of these set as you would expect. <clears throat> and all of this is in control saying that the gate is active, the gate is inactive. So what we want to do is let's use annotations. Do you remember when we first started coding, we had those green lines? Well, you can actually make normal lines of code green. So if we put a double slash there and there, that will prevent those two lines of code from running. So now if we save, head back into Unity, give it a moment just to compile. Because our gate is now turned on, we should be able to see that gate, but the animation will not play. Let's make sure that is the case. And give it a moment, and there we go. Perfect. So, what's the next course of action? Well, what we need to do is create a method to allow ourselves to open the gate. So heading back to the script, remember we have void start, void update. Well, you can actually call a method anything you want. So follow this line down from void update, hit return a few times and let's type public void open gate open close bracket and open curly bracket and hit return. Now, why do we use the word public? Well, in simple terms, to cut a very long story short, if the method is not public, a button will not be able to function. So for us to attach a method to a button, it has to be public. So what do we want to happen whenever we press open gate. Well, it's very, very simple, isn't it? All we want to do is make that animation of the gate play. So in order to do that, we can use something similar to what we did when we got uh, Fred is active and Jimmy is inactive. We need to access the component. So firstly, we need to reference my gate. So we can say my gate dot get component. And in spiky brackets, the name of the component we need to access. In this case, it's animator, because that's where our animations are stored. Animator, open close bracket, dot, play, and it's a capital P. And in brackets and quotes, the name of the animation that is the gate opening. So if we go back to Unity, go to animations, and it is gate swing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the name of the actual animation rather than retype it just in case because if you spell it wrong it won't work and then place it inside there and then semicolon to finish and save. So the beauty of all of this is that this method will not run unless we attach it to something. So if we head back into Unity, give it a moment to compile, what we essentially have to do is modify the button to know 
that whenever it's pressed, it has to run that particular method. So we can go to our button right here. And if we scroll down in the inspector panel, you'll see on click list is empty. So this is where we can input something when it's clicked. So we can press plus and you'll see here runtime only. We now need to select an object in here. So drag and drop our script holder onto here. What this means is that whenever we click it, it knows it's got to access this object. So when we click no function, we can then click on start a script. And in start a script, that's where you'll see open gate. So if we click it, that now means that the button is set up for us to run open gate whenever we press it. So if we press play now, we should be able to press this button and this gate will open. Perfect. And if we do it again, it's, it's not going to work. The reason it's not going to work is because the animation is only set to run once. We essentially need to reset the animation for it to happen again. Just to give a bit more context to it, if we go back into Unity, you could reset the animation here, but it's up to you whether you want to. It, it doesn't really matter if you do or not. The idea is we just wanted to get the button working. And there are different things that you can do. So it's also amazing how quick you can actually set up buttons and get them functioning. So for example, let's quickly set up uh, another piece of code. So let's hold control press D to duplicate that button, bring it over here. Uh, let's change the normal color to green. Uh, let's change everything to a kind of green color. Like so, selected color I'll keep as purple just because I can. Let's change the text to say uh, hide other button. And I'm pretty sure you've already guessed what's going to happen here. So let's now make this button hide this button. So let's go back into our script and let's declare the first button as a variable. So we need to serialize field in square brackets, game object, and we'll put first button with a semicolon. So naturally that means that we now need to create a new method. So we can say public void hide button, open close bracket, open curly bracket. And we can say first button dot set active and in brackets false, semicolon and save. And if you do have any problems with these scripts, as always, they are in the pinned comment in the description. You can go there click on the link and get the script for free. So now, last thing to do is just make sure this button does what it's supposed to. Now, because we had a duplicate of this button, we duplicated it from our first button. When we go down to on click, there is already something here. This is where you need to be very careful about how you set up your button because logically you think it will work. But if we were to press this button, it would just open the gate. So we need to make sure that we change the method that is run. And we can do that here by selecting start script and then we'll click on hide button. And finally, what we need to do is on script holder, we need to declare first button as that one. So whenever you add a variable into any script, always make sure that you do declare it in the correct manner. So if we press play now, we should still be able to click our open gate button and it will work. But then as soon as we click our green button over here, it will hide it. So open gate, but let's hide that other button. Done. And if we press it again, it doesn't really matter simply because it's already hidden. So there's so much you can do with buttons. Uh, a good example would be, as I said, for mobile devices, you can have a button that maybe moves a character forward or left or right or changes to a different level or something like that. Buttons are incredibly versatile and they're one of the greatest things to play around with, at least in my opinion, when it comes to UI development. Uh, next time though, we're gonna stick with some more UI and we're gonna look at fade screens because fade screens are a staple of many different games. You can fade in, fade out, and they are crucial to giving such an emotional effect to some games. So that's what is coming up next. Remember to subscribe, click that notification bell, and you can stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. And I will see you next time.